The history of this base dates from 1944. It was the very first British permanent presence on the peninsula. They established a post office during Operation Tabarin when they were here because stamps are seen as a form of currency. They have value, so if you're trying to make a territorial claim, they are seen as a form of currency. They were the only customers at the time and there were stories that they sent rocks home because the parcels were heavy and that meant they could send lots of stamps. With IATA rules now, we don't encourage that, we don't allow that, but now folks can send a postcard from here. Some time ago, public television, I saw an excellent piece on this penguin post office. And it was one of the things that made me really want to go, not only to Antarctica, but especially to this spot. This is a great place and the folks here do fantastic work in preserving it. Did a lot of meteorology recordings. We still today record the daily weather. And then this big uh, impressive piece of machinery here is called an ionosonde and they use this for ionospheric research. It was nicknamed the Beastie by the men and they had a bit of a love-hate relationship with it because whilst it helped them to do this very important research, it interfered with the playing of the World Service. And then we move into the bunk room. So this is where the men would have slept. Um, you'll see painted ladies on the wall. Uh, one of the men, the generator mechanic, was a talented artist. And you can imagine these men were here over summer and winter and they obviously felt they needed a little bit of company. It's just a really special place. I mean, I think Antarctica generally is special. There are many opportunities to see wildlife, but there aren't many opportunities to see the human history. And this is kind of, it takes you back to what life would have been like in the 40s and 50s. 